creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to use rubber stamps on velvet to make a photo book. We'll learn how to make some cute fondant animals and show some home decor items featuring lots of glitz and glitter. One of my guests is Lisa Rojas and she's a mixed media artist and designer and she's going to show how to make a beautiful velvet stamped photo book. Who knew you could stamp on elegant fabric without ruining it? Lisa lives in Victorville, California and her company is Stamping Queen Creations. Another guest is Laura Hazeldon, and she's a self-taught cake decorating wonder. Laura is going to demonstrate using fondant to make a variety of animals, including pigs. She'll show how to form the body parts, attach them, and use edible markers for detail work. Her cake decorating business is Simply Sweet Cakes by Laura, and she's currently living in Germany. And my first guest is Barbara Tromley, and she's the president of Art Institute Glitter Incorporated. Barbara will show how to use various glitter products to decorate plates, ornaments, books, candles, candle holders, and even tissue boxes. She's from Cottonwood, Arizona. Barb, thank you so much for coming to be here with us today. I can remember as a child using school glue and glitter and globbing that stuff all over cards and making Mother's Day gifts for, for my mother. And uh, who would have ever thought using glitter would have ever come as far as it has? I know. And actually, that was the only glitter that was on the market when I started. So I developed the ultrafine and the microfine glitter for the entire craft industry. And that's what's so different is when we used to use the glue and you'd pile that glitter on, it was sometimes a quarter of an inch high. <laughs> it, it was so thick. It is, it, it, it is still. And um, I'm a calligrapher, and so I oh. wanted to develop a different type of adhesive that was good for calligraphy and precision application. Oh, I see. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get everybody excited about what you're going to show show us and, and look at some examples, uh, starting with the book. Mm -hmm. um, you want to talk to us about that? That had a gold leaf stamping on the front of it, and we just embellished it with beads and glass glitter. Oh, I can feel it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the little ornament. That mm -hmm. was a found object from um, Goodwill or someplace mm -hmm. like that. And you just coat it twice with adhesive and oh. then put on glass glitter. Twice, okay. Mm -hmm. And this plate, and this is what you're going to show us how to do. Mm -hmm. I love the plate. That is a pressed glass plate, and uh, we're going to embellish the back of it. Mm -hmm. And the little items in front are just as cute as they can be, a little shoe and a little rose. Mm -hmm. It just shows that you can use this adhesive on a lot of different things. Lots of, things. Um, yes, Lots of surface. Any surface you can't use it on? Just UV-coated surfaces, mm -hmm. okay. maybe lacquer-coated surfaces. This candle is just gorgeous with all of the fine glitter on it. Again, we coat it twice with the adhesive and coat it with the glitter and then fill in with an ultra-fine glitter. Oh, it, that has so the you glass glitter on it. The, uh -huh. And this Kleenex box with butterfly. Gosh, butterflies are popular. You can just enhance anything with them. Right. That is just a paper uh, cardstock uh, butterfly uh -huh. that we've embellished with glass glitter. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. And last but not least, uh, Isn't that fabric. Beautiful? You can use it on fabric. It looks fantastic. This is ultra fine glitter in transparent and a few opaques, and it's on tapestry. Uh huh. Gorgeous. Oh, it's, it's so pretty when the light catches it. It's just gorgeous. It is. Okay. Well, we promised that you'd show us how to do this. So, um, first of all, the the glitters themselves almost look liquid. They're so fine. They are. And uh, I've brought ultra fine transparent and ultrafine opaque. And on the, uh, this is a pressed glass plate so that the um, pattern is already on the plate. Uh -huh. And so I'm just, it, it, that's what makes it so simple. You just simply touch the adhesive bottle to the plate and just start squeezing. And it's kind of a white, I mean, so you can see where you're putting the adhesive. Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as thick as you want or as a thick or thin. thin. And uh -huh. then you just simply tap it on and you, I blow it off at that point, uh -huh. and uh, you can just keep going and going until you've got enough on there that you're comfortable with and it. And so is it better to do several thin coats than no. to make it so thick? No, no, this this one is you really just put the adhesive on, and the glitter that touches the adhesive first is the winner. Oh, okay. Because it's the viewing from the other side that you're going to see. Oh. And so these could be used for snack trays or something? I mean, they're, they're usable. They are usable. You can uh, cover this with a clear coat on the back, mm 
oh. afterwards, if you like, but the front is completely glitter free uh -huh. when you turn it over oh, on the yeah. other side. You can see it is white glue that dries clear, uh -huh. oh, but it, dry. it, it uh -huh. dries absolutely clear. And so you would put the clear coat on the back, just mostly to protect it. Just to protect it. And if you didn't, you could still wash this plate by hand by and hand. wipe it dry. Uh -huh. It's not dishwasher proof. Okay. So hand wash, but when you're having something special, that's, that's okay. It's, it, it's fine. Let me set this yes. over here. And then you, this is a totally different technique. Right. And we were talking um, about the popularity of butterflies. And you can use this as I did on the uh, object that the glass candle is in uh -huh. over I noticed there. you had butterflies on this. Uh -huh. Right. So I just simply took a permanent ink and stamped it. And then I dried it with a heat tool. On the outside. This is on the outside. And now, what do you, why do you have to dry it? Could you just let it set? Uh, you need to dry a permanent ink. Oh, it, okay. It's nice and black, uh -huh. the permanent inks are. And then uh, you, uh, you can outline it and then you can add, outline it and put on the black glitter. And then when, mm -hmm. when the black glitter is dry, you just simply add the color. In my you, look, you make that look so simple. <laughs> and so you can just put three colors on. We just put the glue on and a couple Oh, you're mixing colors it. of glitter. And you hit it on the side so that you don't waste anything. Right, I'm just going to try to pop it back in the tray. Mm -hmm. Is your workroom just covered with glitter? It is. <laughs> and it, it clings, as you can see. Uh huh. Uh, but it will not cling. I blow that off, uh -huh. and it will not cling afterwards. Again, you can coat it with clear nail polish or something like that, but mm -hmm. it really will stay permanently there. Okay, so once you once you blow this off, and then on the inside again, it still looks milky white, but that dries clear. It dries clear, mm -hmm. and the color will pop through. Wow, that's It'll amazing. It'll be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, gosh, is there? You said any any surface just about can be used with these fine glitters. Right. This is designer dries clear adhesive, and mm -hmm. so we've used it here on paper, on metal, on glass, candles. Uh huh. On wax. candle wax candles, on uh, leather books and on metal. The candlestick is metal. Oh, you know, I forgot to show this because this is uh, the candle at the top and then you've used it on the, the metal on that too. So that I've forgotten all about. I think you need to leave that here. It looks so pretty, <laughs> by the way. It, it does look good. <laughs> and that's glass glitter. The orange is glass glitter and the green is an ultra fine polyester. And are these just in all of our craft stores? A lot of them, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, so we can go and get all the, how many different colors are there? Uh, I have about 450. <laughs> uh, I think we could all find something. Including the glass, about 700. Wow. Well, you've come a long way from working with glitter as a child, then, haven't you? Oh, yes. My <laughs> first experience was a Christmas ornament. And uh -huh. It went forward from there. Well, you, you just do beautiful work. Thank you for showing us how You're to welcome. do this. Thank you. Laura, thank you so much for being here. I was so surprised when I first met you and you told me you had not taken formal training or, or gone to a culinary school or anything. You've just gotten into cake decorating all on your own, which is nice because it gives the rest of us hope that we could do that too. <laughs> and, uh, but I wanted to ask you, what's the hardest? People, animals, uh, what's the hardest thing you do? I think um, the human figure oh. is the hardest just uh, making them actually look like a person. <laughs> uh -huh. it, it's really difficult and I've been um, diving into that lately and have progressively getting a little better. Sort of a new challenge for Right, you. it is. And well, I do enjoy a challenge. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and you said even when you decided to make pigs to show us how to make an animal, which I think those would be kind of hard too. But I think uh, you said a lot of times you look at clip art or coloring books or things like that. So it would be easier if you're doing a cartoonish version of something. Correct, correct. Um, a lot of times if I'm doing a more realistic version of a pig. It'll just be one dimensional and then I'll hand paint it with the food coloring. Oh, uh -huh. so I'll shade it and all that good stuff. Well, you're sort of the, the fondant lady because <laughs> you do everything with fondant and evidently you like working with it. I do. What I are the other it. advantages to it? Well, it, it dries, it's very pliable. She can mold it into almost any shape that you would like and then um, it keeps its form after you have mm -hmm. it there and let it dry for a while. And then you can tint it different colors. You can use food coloring markers on it to um, give a little bit more definition and dimension and shading. Mm -hmm. Well, I know when I first saw it, and I think it was when it first came out, it was always white. 
and you had to color it and, and, and uh, knead that color in. It was Correct. kind of hard then. But now you can buy all sorts of colors. Do you have a preference? I prefer just buying the plain white fondant and then I color it myself. That way oh, you so can match it. So did you color it. this pink yourself? I did. Uh -huh. I did. I colored that last night to get it ready for today. Dang. And, you know, you can um, make piggy pink if you want. You can make it more of a dusky rose. Uh -huh. if you'd like. It just depends on the color and the look that you're going for. I see. Well, let's take a look at this. This uh -huh. is what you're going to teach us how to make this little pig. Right. And uh, did it take a long time? It did. It did. <laughs> and and, and it I rubber. noticed that the little hooves are painted, but so you painted those. You didn't put more fondant right. on. Uh -huh. I, right. I, I mean, you can use um, do little circle cutouts of fondant on the feet uh -huh. um, for any type of animal. Um, or you can use food coloring markers, which I enjoy quite a bit. Just depends on the look that you're going uh -huh. for. Each Even has the little tail, the little coil tail on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Very realistic. Now, this is a different version. I don't know if it's the same pig at another stage, but uh, and I would assume the thicker the animal or person or whatever, the longer it takes to dry. Is that correct? Right, right. Uh -huh. This is just one solid piece of fondant that I just molded and gave him little hooves and mm -hmm. definition so it looked like he had little legs uh -huh. and the mouth and everything. So uh -huh. I just molded him just breathing my hand, uh -huh. pretty much. Okay. And this one is pieced together. I made all the parts separately. I see. And is that what you're going to do today to show us how to make correct. this? Correct. Okay. Correct. So you've got your fondant and you right. tinted and it the color pink, piggy pink that, that is, you wanted. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And then you just knead it to make sure it's nice and pliable. Mm -hmm. And then you just pull off the amount of fondant that you would like for, ooh, throwing it. Just like Play-Doh, isn't it? It is mm -hmm. like Play-Doh. We play with lots of Play-Doh in my house. Uh -huh. My daughter loves it. Your kids love to do this they too. Do, do they ever you, help you create? Sometimes designs, if it's a family cake. <laughs> <laughs> I see. If it's something for uh, a customer, then I kindly request that they go watch TV right. or play games or do homework. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> so I just start off with um, the body is right. Uh -huh. A little circle for the body. It can be as big or as little as as you would like it to mm -hmm. be. Normally, I like to do a little indention that you're going to place the head. Oh, okay. Kind of like building a snowman. Oh, um, really? pretty much. And, and you don't have to cover the fondant then while you're working with it. It doesn't dry out that quickly. No. Um, sometimes when, when I am working on it at home, if I know that I'm going to be messing with one particular just piece of fondant, I will cover the rest mm -hmm. while, just while I'm working. Just wrap over it is all. Uh -huh. That's correct. So then you make another little ball for the head. That might be a little too big. And just roll it up. And a lot of times I just like to, you can either piece the ears on. That's what I was looking at. It looked like you just sort of pulled that. that. Right. I, I like to just um, to form them mm -hmm. on there. And sometimes you can use your tools to give it the nice little indentions. I see. Uh -huh. That you'd like. I bet you learn things about, like in this case, pigs that you never observed before, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've never paid any attention to them. <laughs> okay. okay. And then after you have your body made and then your head, always put a little bit of water and then on the bottom of the piggy. And then a lot of, I use a lot of toothpicks to uh -huh. hold you know, stuff together. It just gives it a little bit oh. more structure. Uh -huh. Throw that in there. I see, because it might would dry, but then it might also the head fall off if you didn't have something holding the two together. That is correct. Yeah. And then if he's leaning back a little bit, you can shape it just up. Just reposition it. Mm -hmm. So you've got your body and your head of your little piglet. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it could go into a cat. <laughs> you know, it uh, kind of has the same ears. And that's correct. And then for the legs. I just roll it out. Everybody's made a mm -hmm. snake, snake. Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You get it now just to the size to that you want. The, what, legs or arms? The, the or little legs. Legs. I guess pigs don't really have arms. And a lot of times I like the end that, that I cut, cut. Uh -huh. to be the bottom of the foot. And then I just... Where the hoof that's is. That's correct. I see. That uh -huh. is correct. And then I just um, push down on the opposite end, and then 
just add a little it's water. That just a little water will actually hold these together. You'd think you might right. need it's some type of a gum adhesive of some sort. Well, the fondant is edible. really sticky. Uh -huh. So once you add the water, it almost creates like a paste or glue. Oh. And then after it dries, it, it does a really good job of just adhering. <laughs> it's taking shape, so it to speak. It is. <laughs> and sometimes um, you feel like your fondant figure will start to kind of lean, lean back, back and just reposition uh -huh. him to get him how you want him. Mm -hmm. And then I always, I like to do little indentions for the hooves. Oops. It's kind of hard to work at an angle that's where you're it's not right. used to it too. Okay. So it's just a little indention at the very top of the hoof. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For their little toes. Mm -hmm. And the arms are exactly just like the feet. Uh -huh. Now you're making the The what? little snout. Oh, the snout. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Into those cake markers, they are edible. I mean, we don't we don't right. want it's, people to realize, think they can use their sharpies or it's whatever. It's food writers and it's um, food writers. I order a lot of stuff online, uh -huh. and uh, you just yeah, you should don't want to use a sharpie. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> that's not good. So a lot of times I'll just um, use oh, one of my little tools eyes. to make little little divots for the eyes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oops. So you're going to make the snout. Oh, just okay. Kinda just form it. What did you make? The, you made the holes for the little eyes. Then are those little candies or is that out That's in the That's little too? fondant huh, little as well. And then I just took a black um, food marker, food marker <laughs> and just put the little dots okay. on there. You can even, if you want, give them little lids to make uh -huh. them look more realistic. It just depends on how in-depth you want, you want to get. Mm -hmm. So when I do the little snout, I always like to do a little, little cut for the mouth. And then oh. the way you get him to look like he's smiling, you kind of curve it, curve, curve it up. It. Uh -huh. And then you make your little holes for his nose. Okay, so now you're going to attach. I am. Oh, and you're using another piece of toothpick on that. But you didn't on the arms and the legs. Why, why it, it not? Just, it just depends. It has more surface area for it to stick. Oh, okay. And then this is just on the front. Just so on it the might front. just fall off. Fall off. Mm -hmm. So I put a little bit of water okay. on this area and on the snout. And kind of just push it into place. <laughs> that makes it a pig right there. You've got that <laughs> piggy look now. <laughs> and, and then, then the little curly tail, tail. Uh -huh. kind of helps top them off. Just make another snake. Mm -hmm. But a tiny one now. Right. And then I just roll them up kind of like a little cinnamon bun. <laughs> you can make them as large or, you know, as small as you would like. Sticking up in the air. I mean, there, yeah. there are really no limits. You just kind of make them your own. Just kind of add just a little bit of water on the back. Now, do you need to let the, the fondant completely dry before you start coloring the pieces, or can you, could we go ahead and do that immediately? You can, you can do it immediately. You can. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's really all that's lacking is to put the, the expressions, the hooves. The right. And, mm -hmm. That really does make a cute cake, and, you know, adult or child would be happy to have that. Thank you very much for showing us how to make animals. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you for having it. me. Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. And when you come, I always know we're going to learn something new about stamping because you love to stamp. Yes. And make all kinds of things. But yes. I thought probably it was limited to um, craft products and, you know, paper and that, but it's not, is it? <laughs> no. No, this is a whole other stamping area. You're uh -huh. still, I'm still using my stamps, so I'm still in love with my stamps, but I'm just using it in a different medium. Uh huh. Well, and the medium is velvet. Is using velvet. Using it to, yes. uh, on velvet. I it's thought been, that was the velvet stamping has been around for quite some time. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you talked about that it needs to be a certain type of velvet. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I learned very early on is if you don't buy the rayon acetate, you're not going to get a good impression. Okay. This, the, this, this is the rayon acetate. is the rayon acetate, yes. And this is the stamp. People will be able to see it a little more. I don't know that I can even show it enough to see, but there's a, a beautiful 
floral stamp pattern on here, and you're going to show us how to do that. Yes, okay. and this is what this is a cheaper, a cheaper velvet, and this is the velvet that you do not want to use do because not. if you look at it, I can't even see you the can't pattern. see the impression exactly. And on this, you can really see how yes. it looks. Okay, so you want you want rayon the rayon acetate. acetate because it's got a, a thicker uh, plush. You know, the fibers are plush, uh -huh. so okay. it makes it a lot nicer to stamp on. And it's very easy to do. And that's what this is. This is that's rayon what this acetate. Is. Yep. And yeah, what you do thicker. is I give it a give it a little squirt. Now there's, you know, everybody has their own technique or uh -huh. way of doing things. Um, a lot of times people will say, you know, if you're going to velvet stamp, lay your stamp down, put your fabric, oh, fabric on top. Oh. Okay, that's a great way to do it. But for me... I like to spray it with my water first, uh -huh. and then I put my stamp down this way, and then I pick it up and hold it. Oh. Like this, so then I can see where, it exactly doesn't matter on your first one, but uh -huh. when you're adding, when you're adding more and more detail, you wanna make sure that you don't run into things. So you take your iron. It's you just a dry iron. It's a dry uh -huh. iron, you, you wanna make it. sure that, um, if it has holes, to avoid the holes completely, uh -huh. or use an iron that doesn't have holes. Oh, I just noticed that. Uh -huh. yes. There's no steam holes. No, nope, so. no steam and holes. And you don't want those. And then what you do again is just give it a quick little spritz, uh -huh. and then lay it down, and then you hold it in place for about three to five seconds. seconds. Mm -hmm. Don't rock it, and don't rub it. No, okay. You just want to go down and up. Okay. Straight down. And then straight up. Like when you adhere and, uh, fusible, you don't yes. want to iron it. You're just putting it down and yes, holding it. Yes, because if you're doing this on it, you're going to rub. Uh -huh. You're going to rub your design, and then then you're not going to have a clear design. So then when you're done, oh my gosh, this is what you pretty. get. Oh, I hope we can show that because that is just beautiful on there. Oh, I, yeah, we can see it now. You see it? Uh -huh, and we couldn't even see anything on the on the green. You yeah, can tell. Uh -huh. it's it's the total difference in the uh -huh. velvet. You really need to have the rayon acetate. It's so you would put as many or as few. It could just be one, or it could be mm -hmm. a whole pattern. In fact, and this again, one. and again, if you're if you're a little nervous about working with fabric like I used to be. Stamp your pattern out on a piece of paper first, and then you can use that as a guide. Get your design. Get your design out. out on a piece uh -huh. of paper, and then just go ahead That's and. That's a good and do idea. It <laughs> yeah, there you go. And since the other one was already embellished, this one we can see exactly how many of the the stamps that you pressed on, and that yes. they're kind of in a row. Yes, and very then, pretty. Yeah, and then all you do is you take your velvet. Mm -hmm. And you glue it on. I use uh, Beacon Adhesives, their fabric tack glue. Glue it on the back. Uh -huh. And then you glue it on your album front, like this. And then let's look at all the different and embellishments you that you put on And then you just start adding your embellishments. This is the really fun part, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. And this comes like this? This comes like uh -huh. this, yes. You can buy it like this out of the store. Uh -huh. The only thing that... Um, that you know you need to do at home is the saying. I did it on a computer, you sure. know, with a computer uh -huh. font, and then I just added the frame on top of it. Oh, I see. And I just used my fabric, fabric tack, and I just glued everything on, uh -huh. and you just you have it's a beautiful, beautiful gift. And what a nice way to use up. You know, sometimes we'll have one flower left, or we'll have two leaves left, or something yes. like that, yes. or just a piece of this, which is just perfect for something like this project. Well, yeah. thank you so much for showing. I never thought about stamping fabric, especially velvet. On velvet, yep. It's, well, it's really beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to teach children about pets, show how to make an elegant ruffle cake, and we'll demonstrate making a table runner. One of my next guests believes all children should be taught humane education, and it's never too early to start. This is a process of teaching respect and compassion for animals, how to care for animals, and how to recognize signs of abuse and neglect, and then how to report it in the proper manner. If you really want to impress your family and friends, be sure to watch next time as my guest demonstrates making a regal rainbow ruffle cake. It almost looks too good to eat, but not quite. And finally, a guest will demonstrate how to use the simple curves tool and create curved fabric pieces, which actually look like waves when they're sewn together as a table runner.
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6700 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. You'll find information on foods, nutrition, clothing, fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. Just go to KENW.org, click on Creative Living, and download the booklet titled The 6700 Series. We also invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.